Hello and welcome to this video about the de Havilland Das Zone. Today's video will consist of about 5 chapters, so uh, yeah, lean back and enjoy. The de Havilland Das Zone. To start, in the 1960s, de Havilland Canada gained global recognition for the remarkable series of short takeoff and landing aircraft or STOL. Among their notable models, the DH-6 2 Beaver and DH-6 Twin Otter stood out for their exceptional performance. While primarily utilized for remote routes rather than basic airliner routes, these aircraft gained a significant popularity. During the era, larger and more powerful turboprop aircraft such as the Fokker F-27, Conrad 580, Conrad 600 and the Hawker Sydney 748 adequately served the demands of busy airliner routes. However, there existed a distinct market and demand for a larger airliner equipped with stall capabilities. Recognizing this opportunity, the Havilland swiftly responded and embarked on developing the DAS-7. Development and Design of the DAS-7 the development drew heavily from the technological advancements of its predecessor, the DAS-6 Twin Otter. Consequently, the development process was completed in a mere two years, with relatively minimal investment. The aircraft boasted four reliable Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6A turboprop engines. The DAS-7 wing design incorporated a version of the floor flaps, known for its successful implementation in the Lockheed Hudson twin-engine patrol plane during World War II. However, the DAS-7 employed a more sophisticated flap system that spanned the entire length of the wing. This wing configuration, coupled with the four engines, provided satisfactory lift even at very low speeds. During landing, select thrust reversal reduced lift, thereby enhancing the effectiveness of the brakes. Such capabilities allowing the DAS-7 to approach and land using glide slope that would be impossible for other aircraft. The inaugural delivery. In February 1970, the inaugural delivery of the Dash 7, specifically the Dash 100 series, took place, and it was received by Rocky Mountain Airways, operating as Continental Express. The Dash 7's exceptional airlines were shown as it navigated the challenging mountainous regions of its routes, particularly in serving the resorts of the Rocky Mountains. Rocky Mountain Airways quickly recognized the aircraft's sustainability for operations in the mountainous areas. The powerful engines, short takeoff and landing capabilities, and excellent maneuverability made the Dash 7 an ideal choice for accessing remote destinations nestled within the majestic peaks of the Rocky Mountains. Notably, a small town called Tel Turide, situated in the heart of St. Juan Mountains in southwest Colorado, presented a significant challenge due to its high altitude location. However, the Dash 7 revolutionized access to Tel Tutide Airport, or TEX, the highest commercial airport in the United States, with its ability to operate effectively in such high conditions. The variant. Now let's take a look at the different variants that exist of the Dash 7. DHC 7 1 Prototypes to build. DAS 7 100. Production passenger variant with a maximum of 54 passengers with 43,000 pounds or 2,000 kilograms takeoff weight. De Havilland DAS 7 101. Production passenger slash cargo variant with a maximum of 50 passengers aft and left hand forward cargo door with 43,000 pounds or 2,000 kilograms maximum takeoff weight. DHC 7 102. Production passenger variant with a maximum of 54 passengers and 44,000 or 20,000 kilograms of maximum takeoff weight. Or the DHC 103 production slash passenger cargo variant with a maximum of 50 passengers and a left hand forward cargo door with 4, 44 and 20 pounds or 19 and 97 kilograms takeoff weight. There's also a lot of other military variants and like special variants, but there's a lot of them so. Other operations. The Dash 7's operations extended beyond the Rocky Mountains and found success in other regions as well. Despite a relatively modest production quantity of only 133 aircraft, the Dash 7 gained popularity in areas where it served. An exemplary case is in Greenland, where Air Greenland successfully operated the Dash 7 for an extended period. In Greenland's remote and rugged terrain, the Dash 7 proved invaluable for serving smaller routes where no other aircraft could operate effectively. 
The ability to handle short runways and challenging weather conditions made an indispensable asset for, for providing essential air connections to isolated communities. Overall, the Dash 7's introduction through Rocky Mountain Airways marked the beginning of a successful career for this remarkable aircraft. Its very good performance in mountainous regions such as the Rocky Mountains and Greenland showcased, showcased its versatility and reliability in challenging environments. While production quantities remained limited, this was due to specific demand for 50-seater stall aircraft was only really in demand in a few locations around the world. Therefore, the aircraft is currently in limited use around the world, mostly with special operators and not cargo or passenger airliners. If you're enjoying what we do on the channel, please consider subscribing to our channel and leaving a comment down below on what you think of the Dash 7. Later!